Well, hello there. It's Saturday the 28th of September 2019. So, I've got two main jobs I wish to accomplish today here in the Polytunnel. So, the first job is to sort out these tomato plants. And what I'm going to do is to remove all the tomatoes off of the plant, the ripe ones and the unripe ones. The ripe ones are going to make into a salad or something, and the unripe ones are going to go to a friend who's going to make some tomato chutney out of them. So, there we go. So, with regards to the plants, I'm going to take them out and I'm going to compost them. And the other job I wish to accomplish today is to do some seed setting. So that's what we're going to work on. Okay, so here I am down here. And what I'm going to do is to just remove the remainder of these plants and basically just proceed to have a little bit of a tidy up. So uh, take these old tomato plants out like that and just have a Bit of a spring clean, really. Even though it's actually autumn. There we go. It's just removing some of this old grass here. Put it all up. Trying to get it all nice, neat, and tidy, ready for usage for growing some absolutely beautiful winter vegetables. So, with regards to the compost in these bags, although I had the tomato plants growing them, growing in them, I intend to keep the, the compost and use that as a growing medium. So I've got my containers, or this lovely con container here, that I was given, and it's going to be great for holding this compost. quite weighty this compost which to me indicates it's got a good amount of uh, organic matter in it. Certainly the uh, tomato plants grew well in it. So just as uh, I'm tipping this compost in here just going to take the time to break a little bit of that up like so so there we go I've got uh, the big tub and I don't know about two-thirds of a 30 litre tub so quite happy with that so my nettle tea is currently stewing away in here in this water butt. Let's bring it a bit closer. I always leave the lid on. I spoke before about this, but it's very important. Safety. Simply because, you know, I said before, if um, you know, someone kicks a football in this garden and comes in, one's got to be careful. So always leave things covered. And also for animals, you know, if a cat happened to be climbing along the fence and fell in and you found a an ex-cat in there, that wouldn't be nice, would it? So basically, be careful and leave lids on. Cool, yeah, that really is working hard in there. And as I was cleaning out the polytunnel, it's a little bit more sting and nettle there. That goes in and uh, this will be very nutritious. I have even been known in the past, in amongst nettle tea, to put other amazing things. Um, Obviously this is not for human consumption, this is for plant consumption. I have even been known to put horse manure in there and that stew with it as well. But uh, each to their own, I guess. Safe. Right, so another little tidying up job I've got to do is to sort out this grapevine. So this is variety Muscat Blot. If you saw a video I put up a week or so ago, you'll see the original vine from where which this cutting came from. I grew this from a cutting. And it really has put out a lot of growth. Now, what I'm going to simply do is to use this. This is washing line, and I've used this, you know, year after year, really. Just keep using it. And as the door pops open, 
what I'm going to do is simply just find some spaces to anchor it. And then proceed to do so. Just simply put it up and So a muscat blob will grow perfectly well outside here in the UK, but I set one in here because I wanted, wanted this vine to grow quicker and the extra heat in the polytunnel can act as that catalyst for quicker growth so I can take some cuttings. I may even, in the dormant season, which won't be that long now, I may even cut this down and dig the cutting up and transplant it outside, but um, at least this way I've managed to generate myself some growth quite quickly in order to take more cuttings because the uh, propagation of grapevines is quite a big interest of mine. A bit more, a bit more of a tie here. I like if possible to tie it in front of the polytunnel supports so that uh, now one day this could turn into quite a big vine and I don't want big pieces of wood which they will be by then growing up behind here so if I keep it in front by using this washing line this works well. And we'll have one more here. Now if I do decide to keep this in the polytunnel I probably won't allow it to get too big. I'll probably grow it almost as a form of a cordon just in this corner to get uh, you know seven or eight bunches of grapes a year off of and I'll be happy with that. Okay, so that's my vine there, tied up. Now I know it doesn't look particularly aesthetically pleasing, but I've explained the reasons for that. So it's in the corner, it's compacted, it's out the way, and um, it'd be ready for me to take some cuttings from. I'll probably end up doing that. You can do that any time in the dormant season, but I'll probably end up doing it about uh, January time, deep dormancy. I find that's generally a good time to take cuttings from grapevines. Okay, so many of you will be aware that as well as growing sort of the, what one could describe as standard crops here in the UK, I do also have an interest in growing exotic fruits and vegetables as well. So what I've done is moved a lot of my exotics from outside the polytunnel into the inside because I've been informed that uh, we are expecting a frost next week. Now, I've not indeed checked this out on the, uh, you know, checked it out with the weatherman myself or anything like that, but uh, I'm taking heed of the information and uh, I was going to have to bring in, you know, a fair degree of these exotics anyway. So I brought them in. So what I thought I'd do is just take the camera and show you how my exotics are, are coming on. Now, so for those of you who have seen them before, you can see like a little progress update. And for those of you who are new to my channel, you can see what exotics uh, I'm expecting to get big crops from within uh, <laughs> a few years. Hope you can see me okay down here. So we'll start off with the yuzu. So this is, hmm, did not want to see that, there's a pest there. This is a hardy citrus, allegedly. Allegedly hardy down to minus 10 degrees C. So uh, that's when it's mature anyway. So we will see in regards to that, but uh, did a bit of research on this when I purchased it and or before I purchased it because I wanted to have a go at growing citrus here in the UK, but I didn't want to have to have anything that required, you know, too much in the way of, of care. I wanted to make sure that my chances of success were you know, relatively high when it comes to growing citrus. So, got the yuzu here. I purchased this from Victoriana Nursery in Kent as the door blows open. Right. Okay, so the next exotic, although when one looks at this a little bit closer, it's not actually that much of an exotic because they 
do grow readily here in the UK. So this is a tea plant, okay? So all being well, I'm hoping to be able to produce my own delicious cup of tea one day. Now, of course, this uh, has got to get a lot bigger before I even consider doing that, but it has indeed grown well, and it's benefited from feeding, as indeed has have all of these exotics here. But, uh, you know, if I can be making some tea within the next five years, I will very much be happy with that. So the next one we will move on to will be my persimmon, otherwise known as Sharon fruit. And this is variety Fuyu. So Sharon fruit, persimmon, you know, no secret about what these are these days. They're readily available in the shops. And once again, it's stated that it's hardy when the tree is mature. So I know that Sharon fruit can be grown with success here in the UK because if you search through my channel, um, if you put persimmon growing in the UK, chances are you'll see a video I put up of a mature persimmon tree growing here in the UK and it tolerates the winters here no problem and the fruit ripens and the very lovely tree the the fruit hangs on the tree well into the dormant season when the leaves have dropped because it's a deciduous tree and a really ornamental tree as well as creating a beautiful great tasting fruit which uh, has quite a history attached to it so you may want to check that one out okay so moving on you can see my coffee plant so this looks lovely very happy with that here we've got grape variety Venus now the red blotches on grapevine leaves can be to do with a deficiency and a good thing you can do with that just give it some tomato feed something like that and that can help to rectify it. it's particularly sort of a you know What's the term common with small vines like this that have not yet reached maturity? And this one here is Muller Thurgau. This is Muller Thurgau is a eating oil wine, oil wine making grape. And last but not least, so it's got to be said that uh, you know these vines are perfectly hardy outside here in the UK climate. Uh, I just got them in here because I, I grew them on from these little plants here and I've kept them in here just for easiness for all of the summer, but uh, they're perfectly you know, safe outside. Now, and here we go, we have here a pomegranate. This is Variety Province, which is a French variety, an old fashioned variety. And um, when, where did this come from? I'll just let's have a look. You know what, I can't remember, but never mind. So this is a lovely tree, bush, shrub, whatever, which hopefully produce beautiful pomegranates. And once again, this is apparently fully hardy here in the UK climate when mature. So once again, I'm keeping it in the polytunnel over the winter period. Right, now that I've mentioned the F word to cheer you all up, I'll just show you Another little bit of protection I'm going to put on these plants. So the first one is like this sort of cloche-like blanket or sheet. Um, I acquired this years ago and uh, I often use that to protect plants that require it during the um, you know, frost season. Now these are also very good. So what this is, check you can see it is a cover for a you may remember my uh, failed miniature greenhouse that got blown away now I like to keep this as a cover because this can simply be just I just tip it over like this oh, I didn't show you this exotic we have to do this one in a moment uh, this is the blood orange tree so take for it say for instance this simply I can just get hold of this and then cover it over like so. So that's one layer of protection as well. And what mustn't be forgotten are the humble net curtains. Very good once again for frost protection. 
uh, like so. Obviously it takes a little bit uh, of planning. But one good thing is, if you use something like this, or indeed any of the other methods I've showed you, shown you a protection, they let the light come through. Of course the light's got to be able to still get to the plant, so you don't want to be going to put a, you know, a bag over it or something where the light can't get through, because that won't help. So there we go. Now, with regards to the protection of these, Okay, so let's have a look at this. So this is a blood orange. Now this is so far my most impressive exotic and I purchased this from Victoriana Nursery and it's really, really done well. Really likes it in here and you can see I've got some little fruits on there. Now these take some time to produce. So these are going to hang on, hang on here throughout the winter. So really got to make sure now, with regards to overwintering this tree, last year I put it in an unheated um, conservatory and it got cold in there and it actually lived. I did protect it with some cover, but it actually did survive the whole thing. And in fact, it grew whilst it was in there. So I'm not saying um, these are, goodness gracious, I'm not saying these are totally hardy, of course they're not, but uh, probably hardier than we, than we give them credit for, but still, uh, be prepared to protect it in case of frost. So if things could get really, really cold, I may consider moving some of these exotics, you know, inside. Maybe the, you know, the blood orange. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. So, if the weather gets really, really cold, like, you know, minus 14 degrees C, which has indeed happened here in the UK before. What I will probably end up doing is maybe even taking plants like the blood orange inside temporarily for protection. But you don't want to be leaving them in the house for too long because they don't actually like it. They like, uh, you know, they like to be outside, so to speak. So what I'll just, just be on standby really. But uh, you know, my covers here should do a fair bit in terms of protecting these. And a lot of these, you know, probably are a lot hardier than we may give them credit for but certainly also the coffee plant probably out of all definitely out of all of these exotics this is the most tender okay so this will be going inside probably before that frost comes and it's because it's in such a small container of course that makes it much easier but once again one could protect it with something like a what I've shown earlier so hope you enjoyed that and if you like my work please feel free to like share and subscribe I have got an Instagram account it's Dan underscore home gardens have a look at that if you want um, if there's not much not much on there really but I intend to add to that so uh, yes I've enjoyed making that video gonna go inside and edit it wish me luck speak soon <laughs>